Well, what is this thing? What's this? It's dead calm, apart from Jonathan. I'm trying to help. I'm just, I'm just trying to help. Right, welcome back to the channel. It's Sunday today, so Sunday service. That was Jonathan, Fabio's in the S13. I'll give you an update on that in a minute. And there's the RB200. Still working on the clamp, putting that together, doing the bolts of it's all sanded and you know, I'm just assembling it now. So today I'm hoping to get the plasticine in all the joints and the PVA release agent on it. If I get that far, then I'll be happy. If I get that far, I'm probably not going to go any further because the next bit would be to start casting fiberglass into it. So I'll leave it after that. Spin you around, show you what these are doing. Because last time these were trying to get the S13 running, they were getting really close to it. I came back the next day pretty much to see if they'd, uh, they'd got, it, got, it, got it done and they hadn't and struggled on all day. Loads of problems, sensor problems and lots of different things going on. But they were really close and the, they've had yesterday on it and still not got it. I don't know, anyway, they've, they've, they've worked out, they've got everything done apart from one issue, so I'm gonna get them to explain it anyway. We'll go see Fabio. Right, so, there's the ECU down there, everything, everything's plugged in. So what's happening, pal? Yeah, fighting battle. So the, uh, the crank sensor, the pickup was wrong on it. The location of the sensor from when we swapped from uh, the manual flywheel to the automatic flex plate, the flex plate pickup rings further back. So, it took so uh, right, hang on a minute. The, the flywheel and the flex plate, that's the difference between a normal gearbox and uh, the... Automatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the flex plate was off the auto for the engine and the flex plate, the sensor ring was further back by two mils. So we weren't getting crank position because of that. Right, so okay, that, that, makes, that makes sense. We figured that out and then we realized that the uh, Nissan engine has a, a funny pickup ring on it with a 36.6 tooth pattern on it, which wasn't on the ECU. So we need to get back in touch with DTA about getting that tooth pattern put onto the ECU. Right, so it goes, it goes right back to um, like at the highest level sort of thing <laughs> yeah. of, of, of being able to control it. And when I left, you were having a problem with the sensor. Yeah, the crank sensor, but we figured that out oh, yesterday. So it wasn't, uh, so it, the, the crank sensor was the position of the... Yeah, of the crank. Right. So it was the position sensor for the crank was wrong. Yeah, what, the, the sensor was wrong or it was this flex plate the thing? Fle the flex plate, the location of the flex plate made us believe that the sensor was faulty, which it wasn't, but then we buggered about with it and fried it. So we put one of- Did fry it? Yeah, we fried it. <laughs> so we put, we put one of Jonathan's sensors on it, we couldn't get it working and then we literally just stuck the sensor in the hole and ho held it there and cranked the engine over and it picked up. So it was a position error with the sensor that was the problem. A physical position, position error, mounting. Yeah, yeah. Flipping heck. What have you done with this dash? That's flocked, mate. That's flock? Yeah, apparently so. It's weird flock, isn't it? Yeah, it's come out more like a, a hard suede. Yeah. It works though, doesn't it? It does, yeah. It hides the fact that the uh, dash was quite chopped to get a roll cage in. Yeah, that yeah, looks good. Mm. Looks good. So, um, what's now then? What's next? What are you doing now? I am on with electric windows at the moment, getting them working. So I've got electric windows and heaters and I think, and obviously the engine and the gearbox, but other than that, that's the wiring done. So you've just diverted from the engine for now because you need the... I need DTA to get on to moving the crank pattern and sorting that out, which they had the software on the previous ECU, so it would just be a case of getting it onto the newer model. So this is the DTA ECU that Jonathan uses. He tends to use the DTA, you know, prefers to use DTA for the ECUs anyway. They do lots of different things to use. That's the top one that they do, isn't it? So, yes. Right, well, we'll go and see Jonathan and see what he's up to. But at least, you, the, although it like, feels like you haven't made like, all the steps forward that you wanted to make, at least you've... We know it's going to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's definitely came on since the last thing. He's, a lot, he's, he's understanding what's happening now. He really is. He hasn't got his shades on today. So he's... Uh, it's all right, he's got them there. So <laughs> that, this is the mm, unit that he was working on the other day. Have you put the metal top back on this or is this a different one? 
Uh, it's just the other way up. So ah, right. The, so that's the, the thing jump, that he jump was. Jump wires are on. Yeah, that's the thing that he was doing the jump wires on the other day. So it does need sealed on. So I've bolted the sensor in position. Uh, so that both the speed sensors are in position there. Right, now you've just said you were gonna use, what the hell is this thing? This is a dyno controller I designed a long time ago. Which will right, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Let's, let's, let's come over here, that's better. What is this? You've made this? Yeah, I made this a few years ago, so um, it'll read RPM from the roller speed and uh, hold a set RPM that you want it to hold. You can change the set point from these buttons, so see the set point changing there, or you can do it from here. Well, what is this thing? What's this? That's just a case thing I made for it originally. And then you can do things like the gear ratio, you can set the sweep rate stuff, and it's all touch screen. So is this something like that like you could put in your car? Like well no this controls the dyno. Right. You could have it on this while you were on the dyno you can have it in the car. Um, but it's all it's all controlled by that. So if I set an RPM on there to say oh yeah. that's probably because it's not connected properly. Um, just ignore that. <laughs> if I set an RPM, it'll hold that RPM. Yeah, like that's what the dyno does. Yeah. Right. Uh, and then you can set a sweep rate. Yeah, so it's specifically for the dyno, but like yeah. looking at this, all touch screen and stuff, it's yeah. making me think that like, you know, the digital dash that I'm putting in my car. Right, well, I'm and doing then say, digital like, dashes as well. Uh, you know, obviously if we do an engine, job on this then it's going to have an ECU on it. Yeah. So is this the sort of thing that you could access your ECU mm -hmm. and mess about with maps and map it on the road? Could you sort not, of like... Not mapping, no, it's just display. It's just display. Um, What's have... this? This is this has even got... This is the actual controller that is doing this. Let's see if I can zoom in and... You look there, that's actually got JDM Dyno Controller V1 on it. So this is something Jonathan's made as well. Yeah, that's linked to this. That's purely for running that. Yeah, that that's running this. Right. So that's just a screen. Um, it's basically a dumb, a dumb screen with uh, some control stuff on. Dumb screen. Uh, there's <laughs> there's ways of logging runs. So you can re replay runs. Right, so you've got this because, well, you've got this here now because you're going to plug it into that. See all them wires that are coming out of there? Did you do them? Yeah, I've done these wires, so that's from the jumper, it all comes out. And then you, because it was a round plug, wasn't there? So you've yeah, wired that, that plug, that's, that's the plug and there. made a harness it for then goes into that. going into the harness yeah. on the car. And then speed signals, are, speed signals are coming out on here. So if I turn that, you get the two speed signals. If I hold one shaft, you only get one signal. Oh, if well. I turn the other shaft, you get the other signal. But if you turn them both together, you get both. So, so I'm going to I'm going to wire that up to this because this can input RPM already. So I'm going to take a signal from here into this to see if it'll display on there and hopefully not blow it up. Jonathan, what? you blow my mind sometimes. Most of the time, really. Most of the time. This is why I've said for years, Jonathan is the best kept motor in motorsport secret in Cumbria. Like, that isn't anywhere. Like, th this place should be another version of M Sport or something, you know? But that's just not Jonathan. He just likes to do his thing the, the way he does it. But, um, absolute gem, you know? Right, I've got a bunch more bolts to put in. 
started putting that section, that section, that section, that, 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 and that. So everything, oh no, I haven't done that one. So everything's uh, there, but just hanging loose like that. So I need to bolt it all up into place. I'm not going to tighten it up because I'm going to squidge the plasticine into the joints first. That's the plan anyway. It's really quiet in here. Like you could hear a pin drop, it's dead calm. Well, apart from Jonathan, who's having a bit of a stressful moment. I think he's going to have a tantrum in a minute and throw something about the garage. Um, right. <laughs> yeah, it's not, no, um, nothing to do with me doing his editing or anything. So I'm trying to help. I'm just, I'm just trying to help. I'm trying to solve, help him solve a problem. Right, um, so I've realized that these gaps up under here are gonna be an absolute nightmare to get the plasticine in. So I figure it like right up in there, it's almost impossible. So I figure some of it's gonna to have to be done before we bolt it together. So what I'm gonna do, I've got a piece there, which is off the wheel arch thing that I'm gonna try this with and I've got, plasticine in the syringes and when you warm it up like that just spoil it there then we'll go do another one so we're going to try and do that and then bolt it up and see what it squidges out like um, and if it squidges out all right then that's going to work and i'll be able to do all of it really pre putting it together because i think it will go in better and we'll get a much better seal and then all we've got to do is just go along it scrape off the excess give it a wipe over and it's done because it is a really fiddly job trying to get it in you know that like you're spooning it in and pushing it in like rolling it up into little like lengths and you know like squidging it in and stuff so if we can do it like this it'll be a lot better so that's what i'm doing a little bit there that needed so i think this is working quite well there's a section there that had a dodgy bit. Now this might not work, we'll just have to see how it squidges out really. I don't want to put it too much because this is the panel side and that's the bolt inside. So I don't want to put too much on there. I think it needs to be more on the bolted side, but just hopefully it's going to squeeze out in the direction of the panel side. So I'm trying to put it right on the, as close as I can to the edge. Syringe number two. Oh. <laughs> We just had an explosion of uh, plasticine there, Fabio. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I it just it just came out really like quickly, and I got a huge blob. That's worked really well. Though. I'll just run a knife through that and peel that off. It cools down, and you like you've only got a couple of minutes to work with it. It's all right, it's just in some boiling water, so just stick it back in the cup, peel this bit off. this edge down here that I need to get for that and this corner if I get too much in there it'll it'll be a little bit awkward because I could scrape it out like so you, you just don't want to leave too much in there because it's a really tight spot on the mold and so I'm going to squirt a big splat in it um I'll take it out there but it's just a spot where you couldn't get to really I'll have to use a stick or something to to get in at it yeah, it goes cold in the nozzle quite quick. You end up with a high pressure issue that then, yeah. It's like, uh, it's a bit like 3D printing, Jonathan. So Jonathan, what's happening? How are you getting on? After messing about for quite a long time, I've managed to get it to work because I think I had a duff board I was trying before. So I've changed that little board there. And now we get an OPM look. Ooh, my bottle has popped. 
And if you look on here, you can see the signal in purple, which is the output from that board. And then the signal in yellow is the um, output from the sensor. So if I move that one up, it's very tricky to do from here. See the little tiny spike, spike. Yeah. That is triggering the bigger spike. Right. They're both set to the same volt voltage level. So you can see there's a tiny pulse from the actual sensor converted into a bigger pulse. And then that's reading RPM on there, which is obviously miles off, but it's just because of the calibration. Cool, so this is a huge step forward, yeah? Yeah, it would have been this far on earlier if that board was on. Which right. board, that board? No, this little one here. It's just a comparator circuit. But the original one I was trying didn't seem to work. What's that doing? That's just powering it up. So that battery there is into a charger thing, which is powering this and powering that as well. Right, it's powering the sensor in the box as well. Mental. What's next? If I put that one on top. Put a drill on the end of the gearbox. Oh no. Can't put that on because it needs a power. So what's next? What's uh, is that that that's that's a that's a marker point, isn't it? It's, it well yeah. now I know that definitely works properly. Um, I can design the board and get a board made. It's got them boards made a long time ago. That's the same as that one. So that's how it came. So you need some more of them? No, I need to design a board for this. Because that doesn't do what this needs. That does what the dyno needs. Right. So this is just to test whether the signals and the input and everything RPM like works. that's working. Yeah. yeah. So now you need to. <laughs> so now you need to design another circuit board. Because this needs lots of outputs. One one for each solenoid. There's um, ten solenoids altogether, and it needs to control them all. So instead of uh, controlling all that stuff, it's controlling all the solenoids. GDM Dyno Controller. So will the new board say GDM Summit Gearbox Controller? TCU as well, yeah. So you've got them solenoids there, and that one, and then you've got a solenoid in there as well. That's a big one. Well, that, that's an accumulator. So it accumulates oil pressure in that, and then when you need, it's for stop start really, so you don't technically need it. But if you needed an extra boost of oil pressure, you can energize that solenoid and there's a big spring in there, it'll right. pump, pump oil into the system. Um, faster, you the engine. faster than the engine can start up and move, sort of thing. Cool, are you happy now? Happier than I was earlier. You've been really kind of quiet and grumpy all day. Because I've been trying to work out why it wouldn't fucking work, even though it should have worked. We've been really quiet, haven't we, as well, just like not trying not to disturb. I think I've disturbed you more than uh, Fabio. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, well, at least you've got past that point. It's, it, well, the you know, thing is, if that circuit, the, well, the one that's knackered, if that had worked as that one works, I wouldn't have had to do all that fucking right. stuff. It would have worked already. Yeah. So it was all making sense to you, but it wasn't working, so that didn't make sense because everything else made sense. I think, we, so I think it, we fried it when we were buggering about with them sensors last night. Possibly. Mm. Well, like, it's a similar problem as you've had with the car yesterday. Like, you know, thinking that sensors were wrong and there was something else completely wrong. Oh, oh well. The lining up of the... Uh, I'll get Koobs to insert round of applause, you know, like uh, special effects. <laughs> the crowd jump <coughs> off their seats.